Time's up. Let's do this. All right, so the game hasn't really started yet, and just to talk about it, this is the second episode of Strive Smackdown. I really hope to do this a lot more often with you guys, and hope you guys enjoy the coverage. If you have a team of five, do send us an email at epicgamingtvn at gmail.com, and we will definitely get back to you, and hope to slot it in for future episodes as well. And so far, we're just featuring some of the more prominent, dominant teams in um, Southeast Asia. Generally, just trying to get as many teams involved all across the region as possible, which is why tonight you're seeing a showcase between Thailand and Singapore. And um, that said, once again, if you've got friends, you'd like to play Strive, you'd like to um, just be a part of the show, drop me an email, and I'll be more than glad to have you guys arrange to appear here. Um, that said, I'm Babel, and I'm going to be the solo caster and host for tonight, as usual. Hope you guys enjoy uh, this evening, fine evening on a Tuesday night. Of course, it's a little interesting to have shows on Tuesday because it's not weekend. But really, i just like to bring about some weekday entertainment to you guys, no matter what day it is. And regardless of what, you could still at least enjoy watching a little bit of that good strife action from Southeast Asia. So, just a little update right now. We're just waiting for Vermillion to reconnect back into this game. And uh, once he reconnects, we should be able to start. Could be a connection problem, could be a computer problem, uh, but it's definitely taking a little too long here. Right, so once again, laning, let's just talk about it. Melody, Shang Mei lane, Tinder, Vermillion top, as well as uh, we're going to see Nikolai, Caprice top from ISG, and Ray, and Jinshi mid lane. Last but not least, going to see Featherstone from Mad down south, there he is. Being blocked by the big pause box there, as well as Rook being played by Han. On the bottom lane. So it seems like the pause is not going to go away until he comes back. And we're going to have a little bit of space here. Once again guys, thank you for tuning in and I apologize for the wait. I do hope they resolve the issue ASAP. Meanwhile, feel free to just spam the chat with uh, who do you think is going to win this BO3 series. You can even spam what score you think this uh, series is going to be um, at the end of tonight. Of course, by the way, there is not going to be a podcast post show tonight. We're going to leave that until next week. And just doing a little of a shout, a little bit of a shout out here for those viewers from Singapore. There will be a tournament as well happening next Saturday, I think, on the twenty second of November. It will be held at Colosseum at Boogie's Plus. It's called Strife Origins Lake Two. Increased prize pool and a lot of good teams are gonna take part. So you can expect to, to go in and play some very good of Strife there. So finally, game resumes here. Vermillion reconnects nicely. I hope the connection problem is now resolved and he will have a smooth connection for this game. But meanwhile, we're going to see Tinder as well as Vermillion all the way going up here in the top half of this map up, up against Nikolai and Caprice. Generally, I don't expect Nikolai and Caprice to be able to pick up those kills very easily, but with Relentless Might and Anchor Away, you could just see those synergy in those series there. So there goes Anchor Away, misses. Unfortunately, Tinder gets a little of the slam there, but it's going to be a pull away. But here comes the Bind Weed. It's going to connect on Caprice. Caprice is going to be able to run away just in time as well, dropping very, very low here. Just one two hits there and Dirt might just call it a day. Last hit from Sprite. Sprite lets it. Not gonna get a kill yet but the buy with also not gonna connect. That is just a very very risky play from Caprice. Nice side step there. 10 health and Caprice managed to stay alive. Very aggressive Tinder we have here on the top half of this map. Meanwhile mid lane seeing some Whirlwind. Ground Stomp being used. Zerkia a little trouble there on that Ray. And the uh, Whirling Embers also gonna connect Everthirst Flames as well. So some extra spammy damage coming up from Team ISG on Team Valor. So just to let you guys know, the team playing in red is the team from Singapore, that is ISG Ascension, and in green is uh, Team Matt from Thailand. So far, Whirlwind not connecting again. 
and everything else looks pretty stable and stable down here in the mid lane. Back to the top lane, a little bit of the bind week connecting there already on Caprice. Caprice dropping to just about 40% health right there, and Anchor Way also gonna land. Unfortunately, it's not able to do much of an effect there. Uh, we'll be able to help Derp stay safe. Hyrene needs to try and protect Caprice a little bit better. Caprice very, very squishy here so far. And if you look at Caprice, you're just looking at um, a total health of about 281 only. So Fire Lego is going to be used as well. They're just struggling to defend the mid lane, oh, sorry, the top lane tier 1, which is now down to just about 70% health already so far in 2 minutes in this game only. GPM wise, we're just now looking at about 410 GPM on both Jinshi and Rook, so that's the mid lane and bottom lane looking really well. Meanwhile, for the top lane, you're just seeing that um, it's pretty clear that the Valor team is just struggling a little bit up against Vermillion. Vermillion Tinder, of course, still not very far ahead due to the very early first kill going in favor for ISG Ascension. But here comes Jinshi, Psyche. Going in behind the NCs here, Lady Tinder not gonna spot out Jinshi just yet, but here comes the Whirling Ambus, Nikolai going in position so far, Pre-6 doesn't have the pile Driver, Anchor away is gonna connect there, Firelegger as well, Volatility is gonna proc on the Vermillion, but that is not gonna be enough for the kill there, Derp's also gonna be able to pull back just in time, Jinshi now gonna rotate back to the mid lane, and on the other hand you're also gonna see some pretty exciting action here, we're gonna have Ray the Squirrel. Soloing the mid lane by himself so far. Jinchi rejoins him here in the mid lane. We're gonna see a little of the Dark Storm being used, and it seems like it's not gonna be a lot of effect here against ISG. But I think it's more for pushing lane or maybe just against some extra goal here from the lane. Uh Elden Slam gonna be used here by Hyrene. Minimal damage being dealt against Sprite and Nong. Fire Lagger, Anchor Away, both being used already. Sprite a little troubled so far, but Sprite still going in. Relentless Mike connecting as well. Here comes the Earth and Slam. Hyrie now gonna take some damage by coming from behind. Is the Melody? Melody going. Warwing connects. And the Dark Storm looking for a kill down. Derp. Derp might just go down. Derp goes down. Now Hyrie a little troubled so far. Nikolai also gonna go down. And the double kill will go towards Mad. Back to the mid lane. Seems like they don't know that Melody was missing from this lane here. Which explains why Nikola was taking that very aggressive approach and stance up against most of that uh, top lane, um, you know, people there. Jinshi looking for the kill. Not gonna get it there. Dropping very low, just about 20%. Here comes Melody from behind. Melody does have those boots already. Warwind, unfortunately, will not connect. Duckstorm will slow them down a little bit. And that's that. So Shang's gonna have all the space to heal up. So far, ISG struggling a little bit already in the early game. Firelagle being used as well. And it seems like um, Matt's gonna have a little of that good time at the top lane so far. Lady Tinder with those skills gonna mean that Lady Tinder's gonna have those extra gold to work with as a support in this game. And generally as the support in Strife, you don't really have to buy those support utility items. It's more like you're gonna have to buy items that help your team uh, a little bit better, like maybe the Everwinter Chow maybe. I think those items are pretty good for... Uh, CC and also survivability because Tinder can heal up pretty well. Of course, there's still a big debate as to what kind of items you should pick up as a, a support in this game because you really just want to heal up a little bit more. Um, a lot of different variation build is ap applicable, I think, to Tinder. That's where I. It's definitely you know nice to see. What is this surprise approach coming in? Melody now, mid lane, gonna go in. Whirlwind connects on Ray. Ray a little troubled so far. No shock field just yet. That goes to shock field. Connects on Melody there. And the Whirling Ambus also gonna go in. Psyche, no mana whatsoever, but still gonna whip the Melody a little bit. Now gonna pull back. Now Two Kings is hiding in the shrub there as the Shank. Presex, he still doesn't have the monocle to work with, but once he gets that, Ray is gonna be in a lot of trouble. So Zerkion, I wonder if you realize that. Now, there we go. Monocle is up and alive here for Two Kings on the Shank. Might just going there. There goes the ground storm looking for the kill on Jinshi. Still gonna land a little extra hit, but Monocle connects on Ray perfectly. Warwing goes down. Dark storm as well. Down goes the Ray. And Psyche gonna try and pull back here. And that's a, such an easy kill already coming out from Mad side. A little wall in that. That we have also paddle being used at the top lane. Seems like Mad was the team to hit level 6 first. And on the flip side, Hyrene looking for a good position on the Pile Driver. He's also level 6. There we go, charging in. Unfortunately, not able to do anything just yet. Pile Driver, there we go. Pile Driver being used. Ladies and gentlemen, there goes a huge slam coming down. But also, going to see the Rocket Jump. Not the most effective one I've seen so far. But it seems like Nong's going to be a runway just in time. A little extra hit coming up from that Nikolai is going to get a kill. Unfortunately, that's not going to connect. Meanwhile, on the flip side, here comes back. It's going to be Nong. And also, going to see the Anchor away. Derp, unfortunately, will take the fall. And Ayashi once again goes down. We've got Hyrene retreating there. And that's it, Nong just uh, nicely, you know, heals back up to just about 70 plus percent health right now. Credits go to Lady Tinder for that one there. 
So Tinder Vanilla once again proving to be one of the more popular and stronger lineups in the phase in the laning phase here for this early game. But this is a little surprising. I actually have only one kill, four kills up for Matt. Seems like the champions in SG are a little stomped over right now. Psyche gonna still whip a little bit there. Nice side step away from the whirlwind, but Darkstorm will still connect. Psyche will go down. Monocle is now gonna be used out to Ray. Ray gets hooked all the way back here. And now Zerky a lot of trouble is. And it seems like coming from behind, it's gonna be remnant members from Matt. Extra hit goes down. Whirlwind Darkstorm down goes that Ray. And double kill for Melody as well. So far, looking at just about six kills for the tie. And bottom lane. <laughs> Rook there, unfortunately not able to pick up a kill on Featherstone and will die. Crystal shot being used in the last minute as well as a very nice explosive rounds there. Meanwhile, Baldir does go down and I think that the team they picked up Baldir was mad. So now ISG needs to know that they're behind. They cannot afford to play aggressively. They should still look for more items and probably um, look to maintain the lane composure. Ganking in this instance may not do them much of a work. We've got level 9 uh, Featherstone down south. We've got only level 8 Rook there in the bottom lane. And for the mid lane, we're just looking at about level 7 on the Ray, as well as level 6 on Jinshi. On the flip side, you have, you have, they're just up against level 7 Melody and level 7 Shank. Top lane. Still no, not much damage actually onto the tier 1 tower there. Whereas for the mid lane, same thing coming up from uh, Team Glory side. Now back to bottom lane, here comes the 5 fall already being used and also they're just gonna go in for the gang on Frankenstein. Frankenstein drops there very very quickly, not much support coming up from the rest of the members there on Team uh, Matt. Meanwhile top lane looks like they're poised for a very good position on the gang. Here comes the jump in on Hyrie. Hyrie looking for the power driver, not gonna get it just yet. But here we go, Tinder a little trouble there so far. And also power driver being used there, we have it. And it's gonna come down slamming in, Tinder dropping very low. Quick draw coming for Caprice. A lot of the displacement issues coming on as well. Nong now gonna try and pick up the kill. We'll pick it up with the cheese shot. But Nikolai still on his tail there. And now looking to run away. We'll be run away with there with a little extra boost coming up from those boots there as well. Level it up on Shag in the mid lane meanwhile. And we're also gonna have Melody hiding in the shrubs as usual. Rook now gonna try and put forth a little bit of the aggressive stance to help in the mid lane a little bit. Deliverance is gonna be within range here. Who am I kidding? It's actually a uh, map wide range cast, right? So here we have Grappling Hook being used. Nine, uh, two Kings, a little trouble there. Monocle unfortunately not gonna connect. Nice height and sick being used as well. Melody still hiding in the top half of this uh, mid lane. Barobot now gonna be used there as well. Darkstorm is gonna spot out and slow down Zerkion a little bit. Zerkion also gonna be able to pull back just in time. Back to the bottom lane. Ray is gonna try and hold this lane up against a Featherstone, but Featherstone is doing so well in this lane. Already level 10 and it has got some substantial items up. They're looking at Featherstone here with a fantastic silver buckler and a golden protector. So both of those items gonna help Featherstone a lot in a meat game. Really just making sure he stays alive a little longer. And it seems like he's also gonna have the help of uh, Paddles here coming up from Lady Tinder. So Paddles gonna knock on a tier 1. Tier 1 dropping very quickly. Rook by himself, not able to establish any form of defense here. Not gonna contest that. Down goes tier 1, down self. And it seems like Team Glory is gonna pick up those extra goal as well. Meanwhile, 10 minutes in. Seems like Baldur is gonna respawn soon. Sentry gonna get caught out here by ISG Ascension's very own Psyche on the Jinchi. Baldir comes back up just in time. And Baldir now gonna get challenged by ISG. On the flip side, we're looking at bottom lane ganks happening there. Already some extra damage being dealt onto Han. But Han there should still be fine. He's at just about 80 plus percent health right now. Baldir dropping very, very quickly. Uh, Hyrie now, in fact, just about 20 percent health here. Shank coming in, looking for Monocle, will actually go for Caprice, Caprice still has got quick draw and there goes a quick draw, nice run away, coming from Caprice, still Derp is not out of trouble yet, here comes Shank from behind, Hyrie now might be in a little bit of trouble here, Tukin Shank has got a Monocle, misses unfortunately, Hyrie jumps in, what a mistake, here comes the Whirlwind and there goes the kill there on the Nikolai, Nikolai takes the fall but here comes the Death Ray and it's gonna be a 1 for 1 trade, Melody takes the fall as well, on the flip side here, still got that uh, Shank running away and a 5 fall coming in from Psyche but the cheese shot doesn't connect however, Two kings still gonna be run away in the nick of time. Meanwhile, a lot of resources on Team Mad has been committed to just pushing the bottom lane here. Tier two 
dropping very quickly. Binary connects and Rook. Rook a little bit of trouble so far. Here comes the environment. Really D coming out from Rook. And also the potting incoming from Psyche. Rook unfortunately takes the fall. But now before he takes down Tinder, Tinder goes down. But here comes Jinshi. Jinshi has got five starter. Needs to be very careful. Frankenstein dropping very quickly. Looking for a good position to use the skill there. But still not going to get it off yet. Here comes the Whirling Ambers. And also we're going to see that Pile Driver landing. And Frankenstein, all hope is lost. Down goes the Featherstone. And on the flip side now, top lane, you're going to see a little bit of that good angle push coming in. But Derp is here to stop that push and defend the top lane tier 2. So far, looking at the kill, we're looking at 6 kills from ISG on Team Valor, as well as a total of 10 kills on Matt. So still, you have got a little extra advantage going in favor for Matt there in terms of gold as well. Just at about 3 or 4k gold lead for them. EXP-wise, at just about 3k as well. So pretty standard stuff coming from Matt, they're just a little ahead in this game so far. GPM wise leading for this entire game is the um, Vermillion at 546, 550 plus there as well. So Vermillion just checking on his items already, we're now looking at him uh, with some pretty decent items. The Demon Fang is going to help him deal a lot more damage. Favor boots is definitely the standard boots you want to get for a vermilion because you just it just helps you run out of tricky situation and pretty stable stuff coming from vermilion. Oh, here comes Melody. Warwing connects on only one Darkstorm, however, connects on four. And here comes also Mad King going in for the ground stun. Derp trying to run away there, but not going to get it off. Meanwhile, Pile Driver being used, and it seems like Mad King, or rather Mad 2 King, is going to be a little bit of trouble there so far. Hiring jumps back out in front, but not able to get anything off on the flip side. Nikolai now also going to take the fall. It's a two, or rather three for nothing exchange, completely favoring Mad. And I actually just dropping like flies there in that engagement. Awesome Dark Storm as well as Shank going in with those ground storm. Dealing a lot of damage in terms of AoE against members coming out from Team Valor. So Featherstone there. They really want to push the tier 1 but the respawn is already gone and most of the members are now respawned into this game. So they go back to Beldir. This would be the second Beldir for Matt. Seems like Tinder is not able to take this by herself, and they will be able to just run out of that position there. Here comes Ayashi. They want to pick up Beldir for themselves. A little bit of that laser attack going in. Rogue just goes behind, snacks up Beldir. Beldir goes towards Team ISG. Familiar now. Top lane needs to be very careful. Top lane tier one looks like it's gonna take the fall there. Yep. But meanwhile, behind here comes Psyche. Gonna land a little bit extra stun there as well, but will not get much of anything off. Apart from that, so tier 1 top lane goes down for Team uh, Glory. And on Valor's side, they still have the tier 1 at the mid lane standing. Bottom lane tier 1 is down, however, so that's a little tricky. Meanwhile, back to the top lane, Shen coming in here. 2 King looking for a good position. Power Driver looking to catch him out as well, but doesn't get it off. Meanwhile, the million goes down very, very quickly. Shen Dev, the monocle hooks back. The Caprice, but a quick draw saves Derp. What a quick draw it is. And also the stun there. Here comes the death ray. Zerkion picks up the kill quickly on Melody. And on the flip side, I actually just still dancing around in his vicinity. We've got Lady Tinder by herself just strolling on the outskirts of the team engagement proximity there, but still not gonna commit to that. Barobar gonna spot out Lady Tinder. Some damage gonna be dealt there as well. But I actually gonna be in full retreat and they will be fine. What a surprise catch it is. Quick draw on Caprice. Very, very strong and good skill. Just need to use it at the right time. So Caprice there negating those kills going in favor for Shank. So nice skills coming out from Caprice of, I of ISG. But now here mid lane, we're going to see a potential ham time. The real question is who's going to be the ham? Nikolai spots out Shang. There goes the ground storm on the flip side. Here comes the fire floor from Psyche. Connects on two with the whirling embers on the flip side. Down goes Nikolai on behind. But we also got Melody dropping quickly. Meanwhile, on the flip side. Now two kings gonna land again that ground storm, but it's gonna try to run it. But here comes Psyche with the Avatar's flame. Picks up the kill on Shang. Shang goes down. Vermillion's in town here. And there goes Rocket Jump. Derp, a lot of trouble. No time for quick draw out of that one there. Now Frankenstein dropping as well, but still not gonna go down. Not enough damage on that guy there. Meanwhile, Han not able to do much of any damage there in that whole team fight now gonna be forced to defend the mid lane but what's notable or rather a notable success coming from ISG is the fact that they managed to keep their carry alive for most of that team fight they've got only one strong DPS right click auto attack damage carry and that is the Rook there apart from Rook there's no one else that can actually help in that particular aspect 
Um, Jin Shi is a little bit more towards the skill, kind of a damage, kind of a hero. So it's just nice to see that they managed to at least keep the Rook alive. But huge engagement in favor for Matt there. So Monocle, nice high density coming out from Rook there. That's gonna mean that it's gonna be a miss coming out from the Shang. So Zerkion just scouting out here in the outskirts. And on the flip side, you've got Matt also skirting around here in this area. Spot out the sentry a little bit. Utility at its finest there. On the flip side, Baldir does go down, and that will be the third Baldir for Team ISG. Monocle unfortunately doesn't connect there, other than Slam will clear the creep wave. So looking like they're ready for a mid lane big 5v5 here. ISG in position. They've got Rook just hiding behind. Matt, ready to flank them, but they're not gonna get those flanks off easily. Here comes most of the kill. Rook there, gonna be able to run away just in time. You've got that jailbreak being used just to slow down the enemies a little bit. And so far, it looks like it's gonna be a standoff. Standoff, in fact. Two kings, who's being very tanky, but Caprice gets hooked in by Monocle. Now gonna quick draw out of a completely wrong direction there. Gonna also use the stone skin there, but unfortunately not gonna be enough. Here comes also the shock fill, and down goes Melody already. Caprice finally takes the fall on the flip side. You're gonna see Hyrene looking for position there. Unfortunately, the Pal Devil already being used, not looking like it's dealt a lot of damage there. On the flip side, the whole team on IG gonna try to run away, but here comes Matt, and they're still. Uh, gonna be able to hold the front here a little bit. Two kings dropping to just about 40% health right now. Needs to be very careful. Zerkion is looking like he's very hungry for some shank meat there. Not gonna get out, but here comes Rankenstein. A little trouble so far. Here goes the shock fill, and that connects perfectly. Nikolai takes the fall. Vermillion flex them once again from the sideways. And it seems like Zerkion also gonna take the fall real soon. Rook now a little bit of trouble, but Frankenstein's gonna drop as well. And Han's gonna be safe. Somehow, two kings finally going down. And Vermillion gonna be a runaway just in the nick of time there. Two Kings did go down to Psyche, that would be the Jinshi, so Psyche playing such a good game so far. Here comes Melody, Warwind, however doesn't connect, Shockfield will lock her in. Here comes Rook looking for some extra damage, but Featherstone blocks him out. And Rook is gonna stop a rather disengage there. So the whole team is gonna pull back here, coming out from ISG. And back to Team Matt. They're gonna go in for a little bit of the extra goal onto the NC. Meanwhile, let's just check in the items a little bit. Nikolai looking like he's already got some pretty standard and good stuff. Everwinter Chum for sure. And a Reaper Sky, that's actually quite notable coming from that. But meanwhile, Milling, the engagement's gonna happen. Zerkion, however, takes the fall in my absence. And Ray goes down just like that. Pretty standard stuff coming from Team Matt as well. You got a monocle being used as well as the Bolt of Bedlam. So tier 1 now gonna get hammered on by five falls gonna be said Here comes a flying psyche on the Jinchi and now looks like it's gonna take the fall very quickly. Here goes Ulta, they have a thirst flame and whirling ambers flowing from behind. It's gonna be a power driver looking to connect until Frankenstein goes down and that's gonna be a lot of damage on two of them. They take the fall. Mad King with the jailbreak gonna be able to break out of that position there. Now Sprite looking like it's gonna take the fall. There goes the fire leg. However, Monocle from Two Kings doesn't connect and IHG wins that team fight. For Melody, a little lost in the woods there as the rate riding hood right now. Or blue riding hood or just uh, blue evil queen I don't care but now I'm gonna try and defend the tier 2 at the mid lane should be able to just go in with those whirlwind waiting for the respawn of vermilion and maybe even fatter stone before he executes that but tier 2 will go down not in the nick of time meanwhile it seems like melody's gonna be run away quickly with the shadow veil And also, she's got a pyro stuff that really just helps deal even more damage. Stacks with the Bolt of Bellum and also those rocket boots. So this is actually a very bursty hero. 
Nice to also see Shank up with Shadow Veil. So they've got Shadow Veil up and two heroes there already coming up from Team Glory. But on top lane, a little trouble here for ISG. Here comes the Warwick, connects on two perfectly. Also the Jailbreak connects, Caprice takes the fall. And now Nikolai gonna get Monocle all the way back here. And here goes also the Golden Gate, but here goes the Paul Driver coming from ISG. He's gonna buy him some time. May not buy him a survival, but he picks up Melody first. So that's perfectly done. He picks off one, and that is gonna make sure that at least they get some value back. But now Sindara gonna get attempted by Mad. Three men here. Jinshi knows about it, he's looking for position for Firefall. Lands it perfectly, goes in, looking for the kill. Sindara still not dropping it. Featherstone now, a little bit of trouble, but Jinshi tanking up most of the damage. Rook, in fact, gonna take the fall, but Daphne coming from Ray from behind. Sprite now, gonna be dropping very quickly on the flip side. Vermillion picks up the kill on Jinshi, but Vermillion now on the run, away from Ray. Ray with the borrow bot, unfortunately not gonna connect there. And Ray, not the fastest moving guy in this entire game. Oh boy, he better not be greedy to pick up Sindara by himself. Lady Tinder is still in his vicinity here. Vermillion comes in looking for the kill. There goes the cheese shot and also good stun. And here comes the shock fill, but it doesn't matter. Down goes Rain. Sprite picks it up just in time. Nong now gonna go in for Sindara. Caprice here by herself. This is not good. They're greedy and that's very, very bad. Quick draw being used. Nikolai goes in, picks up Sindara for the team. Well done. Now gonna try and run away just in the nick of it. Seems like Capri is going to try run away and there goes the Anchorway connects nicely, however she takes the fall. Melody coming from behind, Hyrie on the flip side now also going to be able to take some, some damage coming from the Melody. Auto attacks going down there and now going to get caught in by the cheese shot and also Featherstone comes in with the triple kill for Nong. They say threes Firefall on the flip side connects nicely on Shank, jumping in is Saiki on the Jinshi. Getting spotted out, Shank. However, the Shadow View not going to be very effective if there is an enemy in that vicinity there. So last whip on that big bad Shank. Somebody whip him. There he goes. He goes down just very simply. Man, those whips deal a lot of damage. But now Zerkion going to try and defend the bottom lane by himself up against Featherstone. Already used up the explosive rounds. So he's going to pull back. And Ray's gonna successfully hold that. Meanwhile, Kratos will spawn in the mid lane, so ISG looking for a full-on aggressive approach here. They are currently at about 20 kills for the whole team. And for Mad, they are just slightly behind, I think. Let me just check in on that. Um, 21... 26, no, they are ahead. 26 against 20, so... Definitely Matt is still ahead in terms of kill count. Graph-wise, looking like it's going in favor... Oh, it's all over the place here, but still in favor for Mad. Now Psyche gonna try and look for a good position on the 5-4 once again. There goes the wall in, there goes the cheese shot, Vermillion looking to pick up the kill on Jinshi first, but Caprice jumps in with quick draw, not able to get anything of nice invulnerability being used there on to avoid the monocle and quickly two kings already without the ultimate there. And here comes Kratos knocking on the generator, the generator doesn't take the fall and now gonna get enabled once again by here goes the Darkstorm, a lot of damage being done but here goes the power driver, Daphne as well, it's only gonna connect on one, picks up one kill but that's not gonna be enough, Hyrie now gonna take the fall as well and the whole team now gonna try and push forward, Vermillion is gone but it doesn't matter because ISG loses two and Matt loses only one in that team fight. ISG is still not done yet, Shank without the monocle or rather now with the monocle Will not connect, however. The spirit of Ahasna weeps through all of my people. So nice to see we've got the Void Key up on Caprice, which is the main reason why she was able to go completely invulnerable against the Monocle. And also some substantial damage com coming out in the form of Grimoire, Rune Scepter, Reaper Scythe as well. Now Belder, this would be the second Belder for Matt if they do get it. And looking like it's gonna be a big team fight. Jinji jumps in. Shank gonna get zero out first. Han looking up to pick up those extra kills. Not enough. And it will be at the end of the day. And down goes the Shank. Frankenstein dropping very low. However, not in the position for a kill still. ISG going into still away Beldir. This will be the fourth Beldir for ISG, in fact. They do pick it up just nicely. Durnangder as the melody so far has got some pretty awesome plays on the melody like those whirlwinds but sometimes it's a little questionable maybe it's like he either does a very big play with those whirlwind or he misses completely and that is a pretty devastating position to be in Featherstone's item are not perfect yet we're just looking at the demon fang and the zealot's blade that's about it so you don't have anything more than those coming off from Featherstone despite the fact that he's been farming half the game and on the flip side for Rook, you've got something that looks a little bit more decent. I like the uh, Crushing Maze a lot better because it just ignores armor a lot. And also you got the Demon Fang. So that's actually going to cancel the Demon Fang coming from Featherstone. And personally, I think that um, Han actually did a very good job here as the Rook here. 
So meanwhile, they're just setting up a good position here for an ambush against Vermillion, who is gonna try and stroll down here unnoticed. But two kings gonna spot him out and shank now. Up against Jinshi. Jinshi looking for a position run away. Firefall will not be useful here. And however, there goes the anchor away and then picks up the kill on Vermillion already. Here comes Hyrie on behind. Looking for a pile driver. Relentless by connecting. Pile driver being used right now. And that's meaning it's gonna be a kill up on the Featherstone. Featherstone lands of two hits, but that's not gonna kill anyone. And down goes that Featherstone. So here we have bottom lane tier 2. Gonna get a little bit extra challenge coming out from ISG. Close game it is. From both sides. The flip side, we got Ray just hiding in the shrubs there. Bottom lane generator now gonna get challenged. Ayashi not focusing on just the mid lane here. Hyrene leading the fray, tanking up most of the damage. Shang goes in, ground stomping us. Warwing connects on two. Hyrene looking to run away on the Nikolai. Nikolai is not able to do anything just yet. There goes the shock field, misses uh, most of the members there, but will connect on Melody just about. Here comes the monocle on to the Jinshi. Jinshi gonna be a run away, but a perfectly placed Golden Gate gonna try and block the escape route a little bit. Not gonna be in time. Jinshi now still gonna get caught out in the bye way. Jinshi takes the fall finally. And here we have the rocket jump connecting on two. Now Ray gonna try and run in shockfield connects on Vermillion for just a gifty there. Gonna also be fine. I actually in full retreat. One member down, they're not confident enough to take the next big team fight. A generator, however, will take 50% damage from that push there. So pretty solid push it is from ISG. So far, maintaining map control, ISG looking like they are ahead in this game. But if you look at the graph, I think it tells a very, um, very shallow story here. Just above 1.2k. Goal lead in favor for ISG, I think it's not enough to say that they are ahead in this game. It's just a very, very negligible amount of lead for the Singaporeans here. On the flip side, in terms of score, hoping like they are able to just catch up quickly. Um, man, I hate numbers. 29 kills for, for Matt. And we're also looking at just... Uh, 24 kills for ISG, so 24 up against 29. Shank now gonna catch up on Ray. Ray not gonna be able to take this team fight. Here comes also the jailbreak from Shank. Monocle connects, pulls him back to his own very uh, his very own shock field there. Warwind gonna be used, not gonna be very effective. Meanwhile, Caprice gonna use the void key, stays alive. Here comes the death ray. Not gonna get any kill just yet, but also the golden gate being used. That goes also the ground storm. Second one, jailbreak still gonna be used on Nikolai. Nikolai gets a little slow there. It seems like it's gonna be a kill on Frankenstein. Featherstone takes the fall somehow. Now Psyche now gonna try and deal some extra damage. Whirling Embers connecting all the way back behind here. Five starter not used just yet, but there goes already. Double kill for Ray. And also a little more extra damage there being used as well. Hunt takes the fall from Pedder coming off from the Lady Tinder, but Zircon avenges him and picks up Lady Tinder on the flip side. Four men down for Mad. What a messy team fight it is. And ISG comes up on top of that one there. Generator goes down for the mid lane. That's gonna give all of them a lot of money. So Matt, although they have the early game, it seems like even with two carries, they cannot win the late game. You've got very aggressive position coming out from Team Ayashi. You've got the Jinshi and Nikolai acting like they can, you know, virtually never die. So going with all these guts and balls and making sure that they're able to just hold the front while you've got Caprice and Ray dealing all the damage from behind. Perfect death rate being used. Shock feel as well, locking them in. Rook with those auto attack right click damage. Second Sindara goes down for Ayashi. This would mean Kryto is now going to try and push the bottom lane. Ayashi could opt for two position here. They can actually go with Kratos or they can try and push the top lane. Or they can just let Kratos push the top lane and ignore the bottom lane generated which is just about 50% health right now. Personally, I like the Kratos to be at the bottom lane to just push it out. And I like it if they push the top lane by themselves. But Kratos, if left unguarded, would be very easy kill for Team Matt. So here we have the whole team on ISG side now gonna try and rotate down south. Very exciting game already for the first game. 30 minutes up. And seems like we're gonna see a little extra gold graph here. Very convincing right now. 10k lead for ISG. They just snowballed so quickly. And most of that kill actually came from the extra um all the kills in fact in that time frame. The big mid lane push generator going down gave them all the gold they need to be ahead so far in this game. So Matt looking for a good position of defense here. Kratos just pushing the mid, uh, sorry, the bottom lane by himself, and the rest of the team behind him. Item wise, looks very standard on that shank as the tank. 
Except for the Shadow View, which is pretty, pretty unorthodox here in Singapore as well. So the whole team now gonna try and push the bottom lane, it seems. Ro gonna be lagging behind. It's okay. Melody. Melody might just come in from the side. Waiting for the Melody, but here goes the bottom lane push. Crytos going in, Melody goes in, connects Whirlwind on two. Also, now can use a bit of a bolo bellum on Ray. Ray now can use the Void Key. Ray stays alive. Rook takes up the double kill. Gonna try and still go in here. Nikolai is still in position. Nikolai already using the Power Driver, but the Crux getting disabled by Kronos. I'm oh, sorry, Krytos. Krytos now still gonna deal some extra damage. And the Crux, look like it's gonna take the fall. Crux goes down. And the first game will go to ISG Ascension. Mad, unfortunately, not enough for the opponents here. What a game it is coming up from ISG and still making sure that they are ahead in this entire lineup. Very, very impressive gameplay from ISG. They were actually lagging behind in the early game. You, you just saw a lot of the good extra synergy on Vermillion Tinder in the top lane as well as in mid lane where you got, you know, that melody that just doesn't stay in the lane. She just kept uh, ganking, kept ganking. Every single lane she's just there and you always see melody with those whirlwinds. So very, very great place or a good place coming up from Der Nang Der as the melody but of course at the end of the day I actually still want it because they had a better draft I feel they've got some very good tanks as well as the fact that they can actually put up some good position there so that's it we're going for a short break and we'll be back in just about three minutes for game two in a BO3 showcase in Stripe Smackdown I am Babel hope you guys enjoyed the cast see you guys in the wall and don't go anywhere